Okay. We're going to talk about cesium chloride density gradient centrifugation. This is a technique that was invented by Meselson and Stahl. for their experiments where they tested hypotheses about the mode of replication of DNA. And they invented this technique in order to separate DNA labeled with different isotopes of nitrogen based on very slight differences in density. The technique is called cesium chloride density gradient centrifugation. So here's how the technique works. Cesium chloride is a salt. So this means when you put it in water, the ions that compose this salt are going to disassociate in water. So you get cesium, positive ions, chloride, negative ions. And the thing that separates them is their attraction to water molecules. Water being a polar solvent, you're going to have water molecules oriented like this, the partially negative charge on the oxygen is going to be attracted to the cesium because it's positive. So you'll have multiple water molecules all oriented so that the oxygens are facing toward the cesium like this. And of course I'm just drawing them all flat on a board, but in fact they've been surrounded in three dimensions. We refer to this as a sphere of hydration. Same thing's happening to the chloride ions, but the chloride ions have the water molecules oriented so that the partial positive charges of the hydrogens would be toward the chloride. So even though the cesium and chloride ions are strongly attracted to each other, there are so many of these polar water molecules around that the attraction of the polar water molecules overcomes the binding of the cesium and the chloride, separates them. And so they're hydrated like this in, in solution. Now, if you just put them in a solution like this, if you just dissolve the stuff, then because of the formation of these spheres of hydration, what would happen would be that the cesium ions and the chloride ions would all be evenly distributed throughout the tube. That's the way they are initially. But then what you do is you centrifuge them. And what Meselson and Stahl did was they put them in an ultra centrifuge. And you're talking about centrifugation at something like 100,000 times greater. So if we look at that, we're centrifuging these at a really high speed. Now, the chloride ions, again, with all their polar water molecules surrounding them like so, Chloride, atomic mass of this is about 35. It's really not very massive. And so even though they're centrifuging them at a really high speed, 100,000 times gravity pushing them downward, it doesn't have much effect compared to the binding to the water molecules. So the chloride ions remain distributed evenly throughout the tube. It really doesn't change much. It's the same way they were before they started centrifuging. But the cesium, Okay, the cesium are attracted to the water molecules, like so. But cesium ion has a, an atomic mass of around 133. It's a really massive ion. And so what happens then when you centrifuge it at a really high force, it tends to push the cesium ions downward. So this force of centrifugation is pushing them down. At the same time, the binding to the water molecules is opposing that and tending to keep them distributed evenly. The net result then is that you're going to still, after, after two days of centrifugation at 100,000 times gravity, you're still going to have some cesium ions right up here at the top. Okay? But you're going to have a few more of them, a little deeper, as you get yet further, the concentration of cesium is a little higher. As you get further down than that, it's yet higher. In fact, the deeper down you go in the tube, 
the greater the concentration of cesium. You don't ever form a pellet at the bottom. You're not going to knock them out of solution. For one thing, they're positively charged. They repel each other. And the, for the attraction to water tends to keep them dispersed. So that after a couple of days of centrifugation, they've reached an equilibrium, a dynamic equilibrium. Each cesium ion in there may be moving up, may be moving down. But the net effect is that you form this distribution, and that remains constant. So that now what we have is an increasing concentration of cesium ions with depth in the tube. Further down in the tube you go, higher the concentration of cesium ions. Now, what that means for the density of the solution is this. Imagine you took, here's one cubic centimeter of the solution up near the top of the tube. That's one milliliter. If you were to take that out, look at it, it's almost all water. How much does that weigh? One milliliter of water weighs a gram. So it's really close to one gram per milliliter up here. Now, if you were to take the same amount, same volume of solution near the bottom of the tube, well, that's a milliliter of water with a bunch of cesium ions in it. And that may have a density somewhere like 1.6, 1.7 grams per mil. It's a lot denser because of the cesium ions. If you took a milliliter out of the middle of the tube, that would have who knows, some density in between that somewhere. So the take home message is the, de the concentration of cesium increases as you go down in the tube, and the density of the solution also increases going down in the tube. Now, this is what we call a gradient. It's a concentration gradient. And when you think about the density of the solution, it's a density gradient. And what this means, the gra a gradient is some quantity that varies over a distance. And that's what we've got here. There's a smoothly increasing concentration of cesium, smoothly increasing density of the solution as you go down in the tube. Now, in the meantime, while they're doing this centrifugation, in addition to the cesium chloride that's in there, there are also DNA molecules. Here you've got a DNA molecule. Where is this DNA molecule going to wind up? Think about it in terms of how things float. What floats? Well, a duck. A duck floats because a duck is less dense than water. What sinks? Rocks, even very small ones. Rocks sink because their density is greater than the density of water. Well, here we have a solution that has a variable density. So if you think about the DNA, a DNA molecule that's up here, at this point, the DNA may be denser than the solution at this point. It will move down. A DNA molecule down here is probably less dense than the solution at that point, so it will float, it will move up. All the DNA molecules in that solution are going to migrate until they get all of them to one level in the tube where the solution above them is less dense than they are, the solution below them is more dense than they are, and the solution right at that point has the same density as the density of the DNA. If you have two different kinds of DNA in there, which Misselson and Stahl did, if you have DNA that contains nitrogen 15, it's a little bit denser. DNA that contains nitrogen 14 is a little less dense than the DNA containing, say, nitrogen 15. If it's here, the DNA containing nitrogen 14 would be a little bit higher. And so, by using the density gradient, they were able to separate DNA molecules that differed very slightly in density and were able then to test hypotheses about how DNA replicates.